Hello there, today I'm going to be trying to do a commentary for my group 4 race of Laguna Seca. Going straight into qualifying, and to be honest, I had a fairly good start to the lap. I think I hooked up the first two corners fairly well, but got the car just getting out of the way there. At this point, I'm still looking fairly good. I go purple in sector 1. Coming to this corner though, the car just feels a little bit weird. It started to oversteer and when correcting it, then understeer why. And I can't really put my finger on why that happens. But I ran wide, got dirty tyres, and this whole sector of the lap was ruined. So at this point I know I'm on for a bad lap and I'm just hoping I can get through to the finish line in time to uh, have another attempt. Otherwise I'm right at the back. Okay, so coming through to this corner, this is the point where I can actually look down at the clock. I can see that the time is getting very short and it's going to be very close whether I can make it or not. And as I'm coming around this corner, I'm thinking, no, I'm not done. I'm not going to make it. Qualifying is basically over. And on to the race intro. So here we are with the uh, start of the, the main race and I've taken the strategy to run the harder tyres first. So I know the first lap is basically survive but being close to the back that's less of an issue. I'm not going to have people pushing you know, with softer tyres you know, right from the get go. But I also know I'm having to take this final corner, which loses a lot of time to leaders. It's like I'm having to brake and turn while they're accelerating away. So coming up to the start finish line, I get to see the gap, which turns out to be just over 11 seconds, which is a big distance. You know, it's not wouldn't be easy to make up if if I was faster, which. Considering the troubles I had in qualifying, I wasn't overly confident on being. To start with, I'm just thinking, right, hard tyres, try to use the slipstream to uh, get the best out of them, but I'm also noticing that the car in front is dropping back from the guys in front of him, so possibly he's on the harder tyre too, but I am not 100% sure at this point, he could just be having trouble. With so just moving through the lap, I'm just trying to keep it steady, I don't want to make any mistakes because the previous race I had before this, uh, the car just didn't feel right at all, it's like under braking the car just felt really skittish, it was just, it was moving around in different ways than I, you know, had experienced in any practice lobbies. Just. The McLaren's a really stable car and it just felt less stable. So pitting did the end lap on, so the SLS goes in in front of me. Turns out there's a few other people on this strategy too. This pit lane is extremely long, it's 
kind of unnecessarily long because if uh, you drive in, a uh, it auto drives through faster than you know the animation uh, shows it. Which doesn't seem right. Oh, yeah, I have a uh, slightly uh, dodgy uh, right thumbstick on my uh, control pad, which you know, I'm a pad user. So occasionally when I try to look behind it will start looking to the left and if that happens like mid corner then that could be disastrous and race ending. Luckily it happened in the pit lane there. But on the medium tyres, again he, um, the SLS in front of me is on the same strategy so I get to judge, you know, whether his pace is strong or weaker than mine. If if I feel like he's holding me up, then I'll go for a move. If I feel like, you know, similar pace, I'll just I'll stay behind. I don't want to fight too much if I don't have to. So we need to be moving forward. Anytime I make a move, I know we're slowing each other down, and we give ourselves the last chance to uh, undercut people. So as long as I'm not being held up, I am going to be following and up until quite a way into the race on this stint. Um, yeah, I'm just sitting behind, just uh, following along and we are going to skip to lap 6 now. At this point, uh, I'd actually lost the slipstream just um, for a slight mistake on lap 4, I think it was, and um, I kind of stuck around the 2 second gap, but then um, we caught up to uh, a few people um, and the SLS had moved up through. So I was able, I was close, starting to close the gap at the end of the stint, I'm thinking, you know, well, was it my tire wear? Was it? Uh, was it just me being slightly faster at that point? I'm not sure. I, I do like these uh, TV cameras. It's, Gran Turismo does this better than pretty much any other game, in, in my opinion. It's like. And the McLaren is such a great looking car, it is beautiful. The only thing not beautiful about that is the uh, position 17 uh, floating above me. Going into the pits again, it's like the SLS is still on the same strategy I am. One hard, five medium, and then nine soft to finish. So. At this point, I'm, I know that anybody who started on the soft tyres will be fairly second-hand at this point, so the mediums would have levelled out, and now I have a chance to undercut them with uh, these, and then they have to move on to the medium and the hard tyres, so I have a chance to gain quite a, quite a bit if uh, I don't make any mistakes. This isn't the best pit exit either. It's a bit too long for my opinion. I don't like the auto drive. But my uh, my thoughts at this point are to basically judge to see uh, how fast the SLS is, you know, on the soft tyres and see. If See if the same pattern works out as the mediums, where he maybe pulls away from me to start with, and then I claw him back as the tire wear starts to kick in. So I don't want to follow too closely because I, I kind of like to have a bit of space so I, you know, so I can see what's around me, so I don't misjudge breaking points. Once I start getting too close, it get them so much easier to make mistakes. So I try to try to avoid that as much as possible. Which these last few corners haven't been the best. So that little bit of a gap's opened up, so now it's 
I'm trying to just use the slipstream, save tyres, try not to overuse fuel. So as long as I'm using the slipstream, I can uh, allow the SLS to uh, push his tyres a little bit harder. So and save mine at the same time. So I, I can use the slipstream to gain the extra speed on the straights, and then I can basically lift and break a little bit easier to the corners and then on the next slip street and uh, next straight use the slip street again so it allows me to uh, tie save a little bit better so I'm thinking by the end of you know later in the race I'm going to have a good chance to get past it especially if uh, you know, his tires start dropping off like it seemed on the medium stint By this point I'm actually starting to hook up the corners a little bit better than I was in the start. It's like <clears throat> some of the corners where I was taking it easier and you know and trying to uh, not crash, I was starting to actually get some decent pace through. Which kind of uh, helped a bit, it was like once I was able to push the confidence built a bit but I was still a bit wary about you know the car feeling a bit a bit iffy. Alright, so with the SLS having a penalty up in front, I was trying to pull up a bit closer, but it just had that bit too much of a gap with the um, previous mistakes on the uh, outlap. So if I'm taking the penalty, I don't quite get close enough uh, into the corner, but I'm a lot closer than I have been, probably a little bit too close for my own comfort. You know, like I said, I don't like being too close in these situations. I want to be close enough to um, capitalize on an error if possible, but not you know get caught up in it myself. And I'm starting to notice that in some of the corners I'm taking time out of him. And this corner right here was a big, you know, kind of wake up right, I'm, I'm starting to uh, have better tyres. But despite that, uh, things stay fairly level until um, lap 11, where people start to come out of the pits, you know, on their medium tyres. So this is all like a big race for position now, and it's getting a bit more chaotic. Part of me is hoping that, you know, they take each other out, but I kind of don't want that either. I'd like to make a move myself if possible, but there's been some chaos and, you know, close enough to take advantage. I run a bit wide just so I don't get caught up if he turns in, you know, and you know, tries to keep the position. And basically now again, just try to stick with the slipstream, just you know, use it to pull myself forward. Just hit in my apexes, hit the turning points. Try not to do anything too rash. I can already see the gaps closing. So again, it's like I can see I'm faster, I want to try to get through as soon as possible. But with him having the slipstream in front, that's going to make it kind of tricky with it being you know, a faster car in a straight line. Uh, TV camera view is just really bad. 
fantastic and they've done a really good job with uh, this track. Well, all the tracks, but this one would have been good to a track with looks fantastic. saving them uh, really matters. You want to try to take all the pace you can. These, th this is for position now, so it's like I can see him in front of me. I want to move forward. I want to get this extra place. jump down to third and third and fourth it's like I got a little bit excited thinking we'd uh, managed to gain more positions than we uh, actually had because the uh, like I said the pit lane with it being long it doesn't really uh, calculate it correctly until everyone's fully out of the pit lane But I can see I'm, I'm closing in fairly quickly. Compared to the previous lap, you know, the gap is down. And again, I'm still uh, closing in. I'm trying to fight the understeer, especially in that corner. His, the front right just takes a beating here. Uh, 
And I'm starting to talk a bit less, so I'm actually enjoying just watching this back. Uh, again, it's kind of like I'm half hoping that, uh, you know, this contact between them, you know, you know, get gifted a place, but I'm, I'm worried about the guy behind, you know. It's like I don't want to go, like, completely on the racing line there. I want to go slightly defensive, but I also want to try to get his best run I can. And then he runs out of fuel just before the line. And up in front there was a penalty as well, so I gained that one extra position over the finish line. So all in all, it's like I've not too bad of a race. Finished 17 seconds behind when I started at 11 seconds behind, so I only lost six seconds to the leader, which you know if I'd been close by would have put me in the top three. So it could have been better, but it was a fairly good race, and I hope you enjoyed watching.